Hey guys, let's fly Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. So this is something I picked up over the holidays that I've been playing quite a bit lately and honestly been quite enjoying myself. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I use it mostly as a sort of VFR, I guess, uh, sightseeing game more than anything else, flying around to different parts of the world and just kind of enjoying the sights because, well, everything is there. Um, but I've also been using it with a little career mode add-on called NeoFly, which uh, I'm not going to get too much into now, but it's free and it's kind of a neat little motivation to uh, learn certain aircraft or stick with them longer or see certain areas and kind of learn your way around. Um, it's been kind of fun, it just adds a little bit of extra immersion to the game for me more than anything else. Uh, we are currently flying the Piaggio P149D. This is a paid add-on by AT Simulations. I think it cost me about $30 Canadian. Uh, honestly, it's been well worth it. It's uh, probably my favorite plane to fly in the sim. Let's see here. We are departing to the south. Four six uniform traffic, Jet doors. One one taking off runway, one tree departure to the south. Namon Fornama, Grzegorz Bzenczy Stykiewicz. Alright, and uh, we're just doing a short little hop a little ways south here, VFR. Thankfully, that's north. We're not going into that. Uh, we are headed back that way where things look a little better. Still some interesting clouds. This is all on live weather, just with a modified time of day. Let's get ourselves moving and then we'll talk more as we go. Really not much of a taxi. This is the whole short line here. So where we are currently is 46 Uniform, or Alpine Air Park. This is one of those places where the houses that you see off to the left, the buildings, I guess, are houses. And it's just people who live there. And the little taxiways off to the sides are their driveways. Lifestyles of the rich and famous, I suppose. All right. Let's get ourselves going. I guess for the sake of the passengers, we could also close this. There, much quieter. All right, so uh, we are just basically on the border of Wyoming and Idaho. It's a really interesting area to fly. There's mountain ranges here, but we're kind of right at the edge of them. Um, to the west is Idaho and the exit from the mountains and we can either go south and then west or north and then west and basically just follow roads all the way through. To the east and down that way there's some mountain passes that'll take us to Jackson. Um, we can head to a few other places around there and if we want to go north we get into the Grand Teton area and then to Yellowstone I believe. It's all not really an area that I'm super familiar with in real life. However, much like playing American Truck Sim, um, flying around here and with NeoFly as a career mode add-on, it's been kind of motivating me to learn the area, and I just, I do it by, without even trying, just kind of learn the area just by being here and flying to these airports a few times. It's quite an interesting area, and it gives me a bit of an appreciation for places I haven't been. It gives me some idea of where I might like to visit one day, so it's been cool. 
Um, so like I mentioned, this is all on live weather. I kind of uh, subscribe to the view that Mags has. If you watched any of his videos on Microsoft Flight Sim, he didn't do that many, but uh, he made a point of saying he always flies with live weather and then just adjust the time of day so that it's bright outside so he can see, or not if he's doing IFR. But that's exactly what we've done here. So I've left it on live weather and just pushed the time of day back a little bit to sunset so that I can see and fly VFR and so that the video is you know, a little more entertaining. While technically I can navigate a little bit in this plane, I do have uh, ADF, so I can find a non-directional beacon or NDB. That's over there, radio compass. There aren't any in the area. There are really very few nav aids, if any, in this region. So it's been entirely basically flying VFR, following roads for the most part, which has been interesting. You know, in, in DCS, and even in this game too, and in American Truck Sim, if you don't make an active effort to avoid it, the game will just kind of encourage you to follow a line. In Truck Sim, it's a red line. In this game, it's a magenta line. And it's all just, you know, stare at a screen and follow a line. And uh, I'm really enjoying more of the let's fly by visual landmarks and kind of learn the area, learn a way around. It's been interesting to do. So we're following a road down below me, and this kind of leads me into one of my complaints, I guess, about the game. The way it handles snow and winter in general. As somebody who was born and raised and still lives in the north of Canada, that would be the first thing you get that would get cleared right after a snowfall would be the roads. Usually the plows, the plows are out within hours. Sometimes they're out while it's still snowing. Sometimes they're a couple of days behind, depending where you are, but a major road like this should be clear. And if you adjust the weather settings yourself, you can, which is great by the way, manually adjusting weather settings on the fly, and you change the amount of snow on the ground, the roads are the first thing to be covered, which is just completely wrong. The roads are really the last thing to be covered because of all the traffic on them, and because of what they're made of, they hold heat better than the surrounding ground. So they tend to be clear longer. They clear first after snowfall, and they would be a good, easy landmark to follow in the winter in general as you go further north the roads get covered year-round even when they're plowed they're still you know, mostly white but at least they should be a lot easier than this this looks like fresh snowfall everywhere all the time and it makes it really challenging to discern any detail like you can't see the little tiny roads unless you're looking right at them they're slightly whiter shade and that's about it makes it hard to follow roads when you're going places through the mountains or where roads aren't well defined. Often through those mountain passes I basically had to uh, follow the, the cut line in the trees because I couldn't see the road itself or look for cars that were just like driving through what looked like the middle of nowhere to kind of figure out where is my road that I'm following. But other than that the game is absolutely beautiful like you know flying around in DCS for so many years with the little cotton ball puff balls that turn when you rotate your head and then moving to flight sim here with these beautiful cloud formations and proper layers and different just shapes and sizes and altitudes of them that uh, it's so much better. You get days where you have these giant clouds that are basically touching the ground and you're just kind of flying through gaps in the clouds trying to find your route and it's pretty cool. I've enjoyed that a lot. So what we're flying right now, like I mentioned, it's the Piaggio P149D. It's actually a um, trainer aircraft that was commissioned by Focke-Wulf. Sorry for butchering the name, but uh, they commissioned this plane, used it as a training aircraft, and it was built by Piaggio. So I'm going to jump out to an external cam and just kind of show you what it looks like a little bit. is a cool airplane and 
Uh, I'm quite happy that it has no GPS of any kind, like this is old 50s tech. And this is a nice compromise between what you normally find in the game in the stock aircraft and what I'm used to flying in DCS, which is you know, more military style. Um, yeah, it's, it's cool. I like it. If you're considering getting it, I would recommend it. So we've got a nice little cloud formation here. So this is, you know, a little idea of what I mean. It's, I'm following this road, but it goes right into this cloud formation, so I'm going to find my way around. Or I could fly right through it if I wanted to. But it makes for some interesting flying sometimes. The weather has been interesting in this area. Oftentimes the airport where I departed from, which I've set up as my home base in Neofly, that's uh, Alpine Air Park. The weather there, because it's right on... Uh, right on the, what's it called, the reservoir, uh, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, Palisades Reservoir, it's quite uh, cloudy as we saw over the water and sometimes it can be blizzard conditions there and totally foggy in the valley and just impenetrable and impossible to get down to the airfield and yet it's nice and clear when you go just a little way south over here. So there's only a couple of airfields down this way, and because we've got pretty clear conditions here, it shouldn't be too hard to spot them, as you can see in the distance already. Blinking lights from one of those airfields. That's the first one, and then we're landing at the second one at uh, CAFO. Kila Alpha Foxtrot Oscar. Kilo, sorry, not Kilo. Another thing that's been a little bit disappointing about Microsoft Flight Sim has been the north in general. So besides just the weather, like you can always set it to no snow or summertime or whatever and just fly by regular ground textures, and I do that. Um, but it's been a little bit disappointing in the northern regions where the satellite data isn't that great. <laughs> you get into some real oddities, and we're going to see a little bit of what that looks like even here, where you can see that, that uh, river up ahead. It's kind of angular, kind of square in places, and it's also kind of going up the hill side, so water is not level in places, you'll see it bubble up and almost look like a hill itself, like a giant water tumor, it gets much worse than what you're seeing here, and then also the low resolution corners in places where it's just like a very sharp 45 degree angle. So this is a very, very minor idea of what I'm talking about. As you go further north, it gets much worse. You'll also find places where bridges like this, which stand out, aren't there, and then the cars just drive through the water. Either they'll drive on the water, or they'll drive under the water, or they'll float in the air. You get lots of oddities with the data that they have from these regions, and that's kind of disappointing for me, because I was really looking forward to flying in these really remote regions more than anything else. There's quite the cloud formation over there. That's pretty cool. Another thing is the zoom function. There is no analog zoom in Microsoft Flight Sim. I'm so used to having zoom on a thumb rotary for DCS where I can zoom in as much or as little as I want anytime, and I have absolute control over that axis. I just place the rotary where I want it. In this, there's only a zoom in and a zoom out button. And so I've bound them to an encoder wheel on the throttle, which works okay, but I don't have fine control. And often it jumps more than I want, as you can kind of see here. I'm trying to zoom out to a normal amount, and it zooms out too much. The steps are too big. So it can be a challenge to get appropriate zoom level. Something I fight with a lot. Also, having to switch between where it's bound here and where it's bound in DCS. It uh, throws my mind for a loop sometimes. Just gorgeous weather. That actually might be our destination up there. I'll know when I get a bit closer. I've flown here a few times. It's a nice little short hop. It's a good trip. You can follow the road. Usually the weather's okay if I can get out of Alpine Air Park. It usually gets better as I head south. 
I've had a couple of occasions where I've taken jobs the opposite direction. I'll land here, I'll take another job heading back home, and then I basically can't land, or I have to make some really sketchy landing in a snowstorm because I can't see. The weather is so much worse just a few miles up the road. So that's the cool thing about having live weather. When you just use a preset, it's like that everywhere, but when you use the live weather, it's pulling that information from a site called Meteo Blue, and it's getting it for all the different airfields. So weather will change as you fly, and it'll change as the day goes on. It makes for a much more unpredictable experience, which is nice. Yeah, so I believe this is where we're going. It's on the right side of the road. Now, I don't remember the frequency off the top of my head. I think it's 122.7 or 122.8. They're all pretty close in this region. Uh, let's see, tower. Eight. Uh, maybe not. Capo, Afton Mun, Afton Municipal Airport, 122.8. Okay, oops. There. And then select a runway for landing. Our current heading here is about 170, and we'll pick runway 16. And we're announcing a full stop landing, and then, I mean, we're not quite on final yet, so, position. Kilo Alpha Foxtrot Oscar traffic, jet doors 115 miles north, 6,800 feet inbound to land runway 16. Both of these airports are uncontrolled, there's no tower at either one. And I'm not flying with that sim until uh, I'm a little more comfortable with this stuff. I'm, I'm a complete noob to the world of civil aviation, as uh, it should be fairly obvious. down and then we can announce I guess we're on a long final here Kilo Alpha Foxtrot Oscar traffic jet doors 11 is on final runway 16 to land more power in here we are still low, that's fine. We'll intercept the glide slope at some point and see if I can follow it down. Landing directly towards this great big cloud on the ground, that's pretty cool. Another thing this game has is, oh here we go, I'm starting to find my glide slope, is uh, universal bindings. So no matter what you fly, the bindings are all the same. And for the fact that most of this game is like general aviation aircraft that all have very similar capabilities, and similar buttons and switches and functions and options and all that stuff, it works okay. It's a little weird when you get into something like the Jet Trainer, the MB339 and so on, stuff that has anything unique to it, but it works okay. I don't mind it. The only thing I really like about it is that I can hop into any plane, whether I've flown it before or not, and I don't have to spend 25 minutes binding controls like I do in DCS, even though it's always the same things for a lot of these controls. And I always use the same for pitch roll and yaw and for thrust or whatever. Low. Now, I always have a hard time judging my distance I'm floating now to the ground. That's okay, we don't need a lot of room to stop. But flare, and yeah, see, I flare too early. Uh, 
And the landing sound for this airplane is loud, kind of no matter how you touch down. Always kind of startles me a little bit. But NeoFly is kind of neat because you can take different kinds of missions. You can take passenger missions like I have now, or you can take cargo missions, uh, including some like sensitive cargo stuff. And in those ones, they'll rate your landing based on your feet per minute at touchdown. Like I'll see that in this one as well. Um, but if your landing is too rough, they'll penalize you and you won't get paid for the job because you broke all the cargo. So it's, uh, it's kind of neat. It's a way to encourage you to fly gently. And here's a fun thing about Flight Sim is I can just fly right through this guy and not care. Which also scares the crap out of me when they appear on the runway. Alright, and then to finish the job all I have to do is put my parking brake on, which is here. I don't have to open the roof, but, you know, for the sake of immersion, it's kind of fun. Uh, Neofly also has other kinds of missions, like tourism ones, which are neat, where you have to pick people up and then fly around to some landmark, fly around in circles around it, and then take them back to where you came from, so it's not just an A to B. And they've got some drop missions and some bush flying ones where you have to land, you know, within two nautical miles of certain coordinates. It's an, an interesting motivation to fly in some different ways rather than just A to B all the time. Hmm. <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Looks pretty empty in here. Alright, so uh, from here, it doesn't actually matter. Like, we don't have to set up Microsoft at all. Um, the flight sim game in any way really to match what we're doing as long as we have the right amount of cargo or passengers on board to match the mission wants it'll allow us to fly so now in neofly i could go and pick myself another mission and i could go from here to wherever there's a job that takes me somewhere i can just keep going in this session or i can come back later and resume and it's uh, kind of a persistence layer so it's neat anyway that's uh, a first look at microsoft flight sim from me let me know if this is something you want to see more of on the channel. I've been, like I said, flying it a lot, but I'm really not sure if it's something that belongs in the channel that you guys will enjoy or, or not. It's a little different, and it's, uh, you know, ostensibly not educational. <laughs> I don't know enough about general aviation and civil flights and to, you know, teach anything. So it would probably be videos much like this, little VFR hops from interesting places, maybe using uh, Neofly, maybe not. Let me know what you guys think, if this is something you want to see, or if you'd like to see something like it, or if I should just stick to DCS for now. Alright, uh, I'll catch you guys next time.